Dugo and Dave Crane. Hello, uh, everyone. This is uh, Ernesto, and I am uh, very happy uh, to welcome you today to the uh, Toilet Paper Diaries. How are you, Dave? Wonderful, thank you. I think you might have lost me earlier, but I'm that back again correct. with a vengeance. Well, that is correct. Well, that's one of the things that happens every time that you're actually doing live uh, live uh, television, I suppose. So it's, uh, it's great to be here on episode two of the Toilet Paper Diaries. So what's some you... great feedback from yesterday, by the way. Loads of people saying what a great show, how excited they are, and what a great concept. So that's fantastic. And everybody loves the name. Everybody. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So tell me, what's, uh, what's new uh, right now? Today is Saturday, the 21st of March, 2020. And once again, as we were saying, this is going to be a daily uh, social distancing show. And what do I mean with uh, social distancing? that uh, we cannot really uh, meet, we cannot really get together, but this is our way to connect with uh, our community of entrepreneurs and of speakers and of experts so that we can uh, support each other during the uh, lockdown that we have because of the coronavirus. Uh, tell me, Dave, what's, uh, what's some news that we can actually hear from Dubai? Okay, well, the news from Dubai is varied. One of the things you'll see in the background is my dog snow walking around because it's been raining with thunderstorms. And I don't know if anybody's got dogs out there, but they tend not to like it when that happens. So she keeps trying to crawl underneath my desk, which is kind of weird. Uh, and she's been keeping me up all night. So if you do see her wandering around, it's because there's thunderstorms outside, which is very unusual for Dubai. Um, other than that, uh, it's been business as usual. Dubai's government has been spraying the roads and the streets and all the different uh, um, elements that are there to give them uh, as much cleanliness and sanitization as possible. So they've been going around all the major places where people go, and uh, that's been the news in Dubai more than anything. That's cool. Well, you know, here in, uh, here in Houston, some interesting developments have uh, uh, started happening, and I... I do not know if that's actually reaching your uh, community. Let us know because we would like to know what's going on in different parts of the world. Here in Houston, uh, what is going on is that several restaurants, uh, they are, because of course they have uh, perishable food, what they are doing is they are actually selling some of the perishable food that they have in their, uh, you know, in their fridge or, or uh, you know, in the storage. They are selling it at supermarket prices right now. This is an this is an unprecedented thing, uh, unprecedented, uh, unprecedented thing that I have seen that they are doing that. So let us know what's going on right now in your community. And uh, you know another thing which I thought it was actually very uh, very nice. Yesterday I was watching uh, Jimmy Kimmel, and uh, Jimmy Kimmel is actually doing the uh, shows in the exact same way as we are doing our shows. I mean, basically he's doing their show, the, uh, his show from. Uh, the television, so sorry, from his house, not from the television, but from his house. And uh, his, uh, yesterday he, in, he implemented formal Fridays, which uh, he was saying, well, uh, you know, I mean, if, uh, if we're going to be here locked down, I think it will be very nice if on Fridays we actually dress up like if we are going somewhere. And uh, he encouraged everybody to show their pictures, and I thought that was a very good idea. I, I, I know that uh, because he's an influencer, he got started with the um, with the uh, how is it called the L bump, but right now it's not <laughs> actually to do the L bump, but to basically just uh, say hi uh, like that. So those are the things that I noticed today. Um, Dave, what uh, what are you now up to in uh, entertainment? Because of course you are always super up to date with entertainment, so you can tell us what's going on. Well, it's been kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time because I don't normally get a chance to watch much on Netflix or any kind of TV shows because I'm busy doing lots of other stuff. But, of course, the extra time means you can use your hours as you want. Uh, and being up early in the morning with the dogs all worried about the thunderstorms, I got a chance to watch quite a bit of TV, uh, working through the things that I enjoy. Now, the thing about all the different... Right now, 
there's a crossover that happened maybe about three, four years ago, where once upon a time, movies were super high quality things to watch and TV was something that was cheap and put together on a budget. Now that's changed quite considerably. I think it changed most when um, 24 came out with Keith Sutherland because the actual production values on that TV show were the same as you get from a, a movie. And also you find a migration of movie stars over to TV. One of the beautiful things about that at the same time is you've got a lot of people who were script writers who were writing stuff for TV because then they don't just get one actual credit writing a movie. They get kept on as an executive producer uh, and they get a whole season's worth of, of wages. So TV is actually really good quality in comparison to the way it used to be. And there's enough for everybody. One of the great things about the streaming um, services like Netflix and all the other ones is not only are you able to get the stuff that's made for your particular genre or your particular type, but in all the different languages, so many of these uh, foreign movies and foreign TV shows are being translated by the subtitles or completely voiced over because you know the quality of brands uh, and everybody can get a chance to watch them. So right now, it's a, it's a great time to watch TV. I particularly like my zombie movies. So when you're talking about an, an apocalypse happening, I've been watching The Walking Dead for 10 years. So um, well then trained. I start thinking, sorry? <laughs> you're already well trained to what's going on right now. Oh, yes, I've got it all worked out. I'm going to sleep inside the car, and uh, I might bring the dog if I can keep it quiet a bit longer. Um, but, uh, yes, I mean, there's tastes for everybody. So I know a lot of people, it's been a godsend, but I know that Netflix have been asked to turn down the bandwidth of what they offer, certainly in Europe, because um, it's using up too much internet for people. So I think if they're juggling between um, the kids are on um, playing Fortnite, uh, mum and dad are watching their various TV shows and there's YouTube and there's other gaming things that are going on, a lot of the internet is disappearing in the house. So I think it's just a case of balancing that better. As far as uh, movies goes, um, there's a big change in the scheduling. Do you want to roll the VT for um, James Bond so we can talk about that? Absolutely. So let's uh, get it started. Uh, just here. Well, there you are. That's the brand new James Bond movie, No Time to Die. Why and uh, that's actually we Daniel are. Craig's uh, fifth movie. And uh, he's been brought back after saying, I'm never going to do it. That is correct. I think that's uh, very interesting. And um, I, um, uh, I believe that, uh, right, I mean, we, this is a time for reinvention and uh, it is uh, absolutely critical that we figure out how all the changes which are going to be happening uh, as of coronavirus. I think right now the way that we have to see the world is pre-coronavirus and post-coronavirus because absolutely everything is going to be changing as Dave was telling us. Uh, on his um, uh, on his uh, short segment of entertainment, and you know what I think it's also very interesting, Dave, that uh, right now the playing field has been leveled, and uh, this is a time where leadership is going to emerge, and uh, it's very interesting. As right now we are doing this show, of course, it's low cost production, but we are right now competing with. Uh, you know, people that we would have never expected to be at the same, uh, you know, kind of production with, which is like uh, uh, we were saying the, the, the Trevor Noahs or the uh, Jimmy Kimmel's or the Jimmy Fallon's uh, or the uh, Stephen Colbert's of the world. So once again, what Dave was saying, it's absolutely right. This is a perfect time to get yourself noticed. Uh, so if you are watching this show, you can understand why there was this urgency for us to make sure that we we uh, got this started. And throughout this uh, time, we are going to be there to support you, but we're also going to be there uh, trying to, to, to make sure that these uh, shows become more and more professional. This is now episode two, but by the time that we keep on progressing, I'm sure that we're going to have a lot uh, nicer uh, shows. Now, having that said, one of the things that I think we need to mention is this story of the bandwidth because of course i mean right now the uh overcrowding of the internet is actually creating some uh issues so in fact let me just show you guys a clip that um uh, i think it's it's very relevant to what is going on that possibly we would have never expected 
So the let me just roll the clip. The migration online is putting our internet infrastructure to the test. In Seattle, one of the coronavirus hotspots, internet usage has spiked 40% in the last week alone. There was some panic. Mom Michelle Peters is juggling working from home and her three kids taking online classes from a single laptop, all on an ordinary Wi-Fi connection. I have online resources and things coming from the library and things coming from teachers and now friends all over the country who are in the same boat pushing out. Here's my homeschool information. And it just is overwhelming. To ease the burden, the FCC is working with companies to open up Wi-Fi hotspots, promising not to cut off any Internet services for individuals and small businesses if they can't pay the bill and waiving late fees. Whether it's somebody who's staying home from work teleworking, whether it's a student doing homework, whether it's a patient who needs to get in touch with his or her healthcare provider, that connectivity is going to be really important in the days to come. And the FCC wants to make sure that every American keeps and stays connected. At the same time, major providers say they're preparing to increase capacity if needed. AT&T and Comcast, the parent company of NBC Universal, say they'll lift data caps so users won't pay overage. Cox says it will automatically upgrade basic internet packages to a faster speed. If your internet connection is feeling slow, be sure to take the devices that you're not using off of the Wi-Fi and no streaming entertainment or video games when you're trying to get that work or homework done. And you can always call your internet provider to see if they'll up the speed for you. So as you can see, there's a lot of uh, things which are going to be definitely uh, changing. So uh, Dave, what do you uh, make out of this? Okay, well, very interesting. I mean, I think that the internet providers have to really look, I mean, they can milk it, they can make a lot of money right now, but they can also make a difference to the way that people are. The, the key thing is that regardless of whether you are charged or whether they give you more um, internet for your money, they have to keep that lifeline going. For many people, being stuck at home is not going to be fun. It can be um, manageable if you've got a lifeline to the outside world. So people will remember who looked after them and who didn't. So it will be a case that every single um, internet provider will have to treat its customers like gold. Otherwise, they will get stuffed afterwards by people saying, I wish I'd never gone with those guys. I had a terrible time during the, the coronavirus uh, lockdown. Um, I wish I'd never signed up. So they're under scrutiny as well. But they have to be very careful how much bandwidth is being used. But people also have to monitor it in their own home. And so sometimes the kids can't do the homework and watch Netflix at the same time. That is correct. I think uh, right now, uh, Vincent, my 14-year-old uh, soldier, has gone 100% uh, online with all the... I mean, they were very fast in getting everything done. However, my daughter, Nina, uh, has not uh, yet still received her assignments and, uh, and everything that she has to be uh, getting. So, I mean, little by little, I think we're going to be getting more and more saturated uh, with the internet and the changes, which actually takes me to another very interesting point, which is right now, uh, as a speaker, as an expert, everybody's thinking, well, you know, we're going to go uh, online and they are, uh, you know, they are, everybody's doing uh, different webinars and they're doing different things and whatever. And I can understand, but I think most importantly in this situation, we need to have, uh, you know, we need to pause for a second and we need to think a little bit uh, of what's going on and how we're going to be doing it because I have the feeling that there's going to be an oversaturation of uh, you know online courses from all the experts and the gurus that cannot uh, have uh, live events and what does what's that going to create is it's going to create a huge amount of uh, a supply of online uh, education and of course in my way of seeing, uh, the prices are going to drop. So I think the most important thing to think about is not so much into trying to uh, into trying to create new content, new educational content, but more than anything, uh, because there's going to be an oversupply of it. But more than anything, try to focus on the communities that you're already serving in actually trying to provide tremendous value. What's your take on that, Dave? I agree with you completely. I think that one of the things that people should have been doing during the, the opportunities they had earlier 
was um, making connections and growing their tribe and their connections. Um, because those are the people who know you, they trust you, they like you, and they've been connected to you for quite some time. They've seen what you've posted about, they know what you do for a living, they're the most likely to convert when you've got a product that you want to sell to them. Now, as for the fact there's oversaturation of brands and people putting out their content and their courses and all the rest of it, I think you've got to put it in perspective, perspective of Starbucks. Starbucks, which arguably, I mean, okay, we're, we're all empty now, um, but Starbucks, is very expensive for coffee, it's very expensive for biscuits, it's very expensive for everything at the moment. So why do they make so much money? Well, because people want the experience. They want to know that you get treated the right way, that you've got a lot of choice, that you can find something that's particular to you. And also the branding is very important. When you go along, you can be seen, it's got bragging rights, you can see what the world is doing. And so these are big hints that anybody who wants to fight a pricing war we could all have a cup of coffee at home for less than a dollar, but at the same time, you'll happily pay $5, $6, whatever it is, to go to a Starbucks because the experience of having it there is worth the extra investment. So I don't think price is the only the only thing. I was chatting to a very good friend of ours earlier, uh, Gotham Ganglani, who was talking to um, one of his uh, neighbors who has an online trading system, and he did a promotion of dropping the price down by 75% this week to try and get people to buy it so he could make a lot of money, obviously worried about lack of uh, events coming through, uh, and it backfired badly. It ended up with a situation where people weren't buying it. I mean, how do you put yourself up again and show you the value when people know that you'll pack itself? So I think that the key to it is to review what you have, always keep an ear to what's going down well in the market, but also look to give heaps of value and maybe not even selling it yet. Maybe you need to reinvent and go back again to what makes people connect with you from the very first place and see where from there you can find your pricing and when it's the right time to bundle together. Correct. I think uh, uh, that's going to be what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, which is going to be reinvention. Um, and I hope that you're tuned in. Uh, today we started... Uh, in fact, uh, one hour earlier, normally we are going to be at uh, 12 o'clock um, uh, US time and uh, 9 o'clock Dubai time. Uh, that is uh, Central Standard Time. The reason why we started one hour earlier today, it's because we are having actually a, uh, a networking uh, educational session with our uh, with our with our tribe, with our uh, group of uh, speaker uh, customers. Actually, if you want to uh, join us, we are having that session. We're starting at 12 o'clock noon, 9 o'clock Dubai. And uh, you can join us. We uh, uh, in You can go there to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, give me paper. And the reason why we say it's give me paper is because this is the toilet paper diaries. And we want to make sure that you have toilet paper that you are not freaking out and that's the reason why we are offering that so if you um are a, a speaker if you're an entrepreneur if you are uh, uh somebody which is uh you know providing knowledge value in the uh, knowledge-based economy i think this group will be extremely useful to you so go to bit.ly give me paper and uh, just before we go dave uh can you let them know what's going to be the quiz or the question for today we got some great answers also for um what happened uh for the question that we got yesterday so i let you go there yeah. and then we switch off the yeah. side. we go we, we go here I, I keep moving around because my dog keeps jumping underneath my desk because it's thunderstorms again so she's done about three rounds of the desk barely fits my fat leg so to have a big white dog under it as well is kind of crazy. So uh, yeah, yesterday we asked about the, the question about what if the internet went down and what would you do? And we got mixed calls. Lots of people said, oh no, it'd be terrible. Uh, I'd have to go back to talking to my family, which I can kind of understand. A lot of people said it'd be a great opportunity to to read books and, and just watch DVDs. I don't know if anyone keeps DVDs anymore um, or you have anything you could play them on. Um, some people are saying that it's a good thing for the, for the um, atmosphere that we've got right now um, that uh, things have calmed down anyway. So we've got less uh, cars on the road, so therefore um, the, the atmosphere is cleaner around about with places. So generally the internet going down would mean going back to basics. One person actually said uh, that they wouldn't be caught on the phone everywhere they went. 
because you'd have to go back to having a house line with an actual cable. So the only time you could talk to anybody would be if you're in your own home or in the office. So you could actually go missing in the car for hours on end and go shopping. So maybe that would be interesting to some people. And I think that for anybody who can't hide, that'd be kind of cool. So today's question, and we'd love to have your feedback, by the way. And you will mention the group you can join us in and give your feedback. And also give it into a feed here as you're watching is when it is all over, because the coronavirus will eventually be all over, what elements of it that affected our lives would you like to keep? Would you like to keep the fact that you're talking to your family more, that you keep in contact with people more? Is it the difference that it makes to the climate? Because less people are doing all the industrialization and you know using and consuming and, and having fuel in the cars because nobody's going anywhere. Um, what would you like to see keep after the coronavirus has passed over and uh, we're all going back to business as normal. We'd love to find your answers and your details. How do they contact us, Ernesto? That's a great uh, question, and I'm, you already uh, got me thinking about it. Yes, please make sure to go to bit.ly uh, forward slash give me paper. So that's B-I-T dot L-Y, give me paper. That is our LinkedIn community for entrepreneurs, speakers, and uh, experts, which are actually... Uh, working on the knowledge-based economy. So make sure to join us there. And uh, also, let me remind you that uh, tomorrow we will be live again uh, at noon Central Standard Time in the United States. And uh, what time are we going to be live in Dubai time? Well, we'll be live at 9 o'clock unless you've got another webinar to do. <laughs> no, I have not. But once again, I remind you, this uh, this is uh, something that was already uh, planned for a while. So if you would like to join us in this uh, session that we're having for our community today, we're going to be there in about half an hour. So we're actually jumping out of the air right now, getting ready and then getting to uh, our new platform. What are we going to be covering there? I think you're going to find it very interesting. If you're watching this video on a replay, doesn't matter. Go there and you're going to be able to watch the replay. We're going to be talking about what's going to be happening in the speaking industry right now that all the events have been canceled. Uh, we've been, we have been speaking with event planners. We have been speaking with speaker bureaus. We have been speaking with a number of different people, which are really, they have the ear on the uh, pulse. They have the hand on the pulse or whatever the expression is in English. And uh, we have some really interesting information. So if you want to know more about that, uh, just simply join us there in our community where you can go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, give me paper. So once again, this is Ernesto Verdugo and... Dave Crane and uh, Snow, who's going bonkers under the desk because out, out here, thunderstorms are going, the rain's coming down, and hopefully tomorrow it'll be business as normal. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you soon. Take care and uh, talk to you very soon. This has been... Uh, this has been a live show from Dubai and Houston, the uh, Toilet Paper Diaries.